Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shanyavari Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakaupa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaye Bhacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adwaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So welcome everyone to our study of the nectar of devotion at the level of Bhakti Shastri and today is lesson number 12 which will be the last lesson and we're just going to uh, just review some things we covered. Alright, so let's see here's here's Radakund. Radakund is the the topmost place in the universe. It's a place where Srimati Radharani enjoys the most. To give pleasure to Krishna. Here's the set, six Goswamis. Radha Kunda Tate Kalindi Tanaya Tire Chavamsi Vate Preman Madhava Sadha Seshadha Saya Grasto Pramato Sadha Gayanto Chakadha Hare Gunavaram Rupa Sanat No Raghujago Sri Jiva Gopala Go So the six Goswamis, of course we are focusing here, Nectar of Devotion and Nectar of instruction is the teachings of Srila Rupa Goswami. Now, Rupa Goswami was like the leader of the six Goswamis, but at the same time he was the younger brother of Sanatan. Sanatan was his older brother. So the, they were all in Vrindavan. Raghunath Bhatta Goswami came from he came from another family, he came from Tap he was the son of Tapana Mishra, who was a devotee of Lord Chaitanya. And Raghunath Das Goswami. Raghunath Das, he was also the son of a very rich man, Haranya and Govardhan Majumda. They were two brothers. They were very, very rich. And Raghunath Das was in their family. He ran away from home. So he joined Lord Chaitanya, first of all, he was in Jagannath Puri, and then after Lord Chaitanya disappeared, then Raghunath Das came to Vrindavan, and he resided in Vrindavan, especially Radha Kund. And Jiva Goswami, Jiva Goswami was the son of the brother of Rupa and Sanatan. There was another brother, there were three brothers. The other brother was called Anupam. And Jiva Goswami was his son. So Rupa and Sanatan were his uncles. So Jiva Goswami, he came to Vrindavan when he was a young man and he stayed there in Vrindavan. And he became the leader after Rupa and Sanatan left the world. Then Jiva Goswami became the main Goswami there in Vrindavan. And Gopal Bhatta Goswami, Gopal Bhatta Goswami came from South India. When Lord Chaitanya had gone to South India, he'd gone to Sri Rangam, a big temple in, in Tamil Nadu, and he stayed with one family there. 
and the, the family, the father was a priest in the, in the Sri Rangam temple there, and Gopal, Gopal was the son. And so Gopal met Lord Chaitanya and he became attracted, and Gopal came and resided in Vrindavan, and he became a Goswami. So this was the six Goswamis. There were other Goswamis as well. There was people like Lokanath Goswami, Bugarba Goswami. They were also there. They came very early to Vrindavan and they did a lot of work. So Srinivas wrote this song, Srinivas Acharya. He was a student of Jiva Goswami. He studied in the school there, Jiva Goswami. So it's described, they were, they were sometimes on the bank of Radhakund or the shores of the Yamuna and sometimes at Vamsivat. And they appeared just like madmen in the full ecstasy of love for Krishna, exhibiting different transcendental symptoms in their bodies. And they were merged in the ecstasy of Krishna consciousness. So this was the Goswamis, they were always in ecstasy. And they were experiencing a lot of bhava and prema. And here you see the, this is the Bhajan Kutir of Rupa Goswami at the Radha Damodar temple. It's very different now, it's all changed. They built a big building over the top of it. But the Samadhi is still there, okay. So we spoke about the qualification for Raganuga Bhakti. Tad tad bhavadi madurye shruti dir yad upekshate natra shastram na yuktim cha tau lobot pati lakshanam. Who is qualified for Raganuga Bhakti? So this is from. Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and also quoted in the Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila 22, chapter 22 means Lord Chaitanya's teaching to Sanatana Goswami, text number 155. So it describes about who is qualified for Raga Noga Bhakti. It's written there, when an advanced realized devotee hears about the affairs of the devotees of Vrindavan in the mellows of Shanta, Dashya, Shakya, Vatsalya and Madhurya, he becomes inclined in one of these ways and his intelligence becomes attracted, right? So, Melin, do you know what's the meaning of Sakya? Sakya? Uh, uh, I don't know. Do you know the meaning of Santa? Shanta? The mellows of Shanta, Dashya, Sakya? Do you know the meaning Shanta? No. No? The, Sitala, do you know? Sorry, I don't know, Maharaj. What about Lila Avatar? Do you know? Uh, I think it's uh, a, a parental. What? Which one is parental? Uh, I I don't know. Uh, I only know Dasya is servant. Ma Madur Madurya is uh, conjugal love. I don't know the other three ones. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, we'll ask uh, Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu, you tell us, what is Shanta? Vibhu Chaitanya, is he there? No, no, he's not there. Oh, what about uh, Hari, uh, um, Bhaktavatsala Nishringa? Shanta, I think, is neutrality. Neutrality, right. Shanta means this neutrality. Neutrality, the stage, it, it, it means you, you, you are appreciating the opulence of Krishna. You're attracted by the beauty and by the opulence of Krishna, but you don't do any service. 
That is called Shantaras. You, you, you like Krishna, you're attracted, but you don't do any service. So that is the lowest stage, it's called Santaras, Shantaras, the stage of neutrality. Maharaj, yes? in, in the stage of Santaras, even the devotee doesn't uh, chant also in beads. Shantaras? Yes. Well, it, it depends, they may chant. If they chant, that is service, you know. Mm. We're talking about in the spiritual world, you see, in the, in the okay, okay. Shantaras. But here, you know, examples of Shantaras are people like the four Kumaras. Mm -hmm. The four Kumaras, you know, they mostly, they do meditation. Okay. They're, in the they're in the upper planet, they're in the planet of Tapaloka. Tapaloka, it's below Brahmaloka, Tapaloka. And they, they're engaged in meditation there. They just meditate. They don't do active service. So they don't chant even. But they meditate on the Lord. All right, so Shanta means neutrality. Dasha is servant. And Sakya, Sakya means friendship. Right? Who are Krishna's friends? Sitala, do you know anybody who's a friend of Krishna? This cowboy. The cowherd boys, yes. Cowherd. Do you know the names? Name of any of them? Uh, I forgot. Oh. You know, you may be asked, you may be asked who is in Shantaras, who is in Dasharas, who is in Sakyaras. You should know. Okay. Right? Shantaras, we say there's the four Kumaras and also the nine Yogendras. And then Dasharas, who is Krishna's servants? Do you know the name of any Krishna's servants? Hanuman? Ha Hanuman is the servant of Lord Rama, yes, he's a servant of Lord Rama, that's good. Also you could say Daruka, Daruka is, you know what he does? Daruka, yes, he's a chariot driver, he's a chariot driver for Lord Krishna, Daruka, Lord Krishna's chariot driver. We see Krishna, he, he drove the chariot for Arjuna at the Kurukshetra war. But Krishna has his own chariot driver. His own chariot driver is da Daruka. And in Vrindavan, there's also people who are Krishna's servants. Do you know any of Krishna's servants in Vrindavan? There is Raktak. Raktak and Chitrak, and like that, there are servants, and so we have Hanuman, we have Daruka, and we have Raktak, and Chitrak, right, like that. And then Sakya, Krishna's friends, Bhattavatsal Nishringa, do you know the name, Cowherd Boys? You can give some names. I know some, like Subal, Sridam. Yeah, Subal, Sridam, yes. Anybody else? Sridam, Sudama. Sudama, yes, good. Yeah, they're all Krishna's friends. And then, who is in Vatsavya Ras? That is Parenthood Ras. Sitala? Who is the parents of Krishna? Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj and also Vasudeva and Devaki. Yes, good, yes. Mm -hmm. And Madhurya Ras, who is in Madhurya Ras? Rukmini, Radharani. Radharani, Rukmini, yeah, Krishna's wives, yeah, okay, good, yeah. Krishna's gopis, the gopis, who are the gopis? You know the names of the eight gopis in Mayapur? Uh, I remember some, 
Lalita, Vishaka, Chicha, and Tunga Vidya. Yeah, good. You got four. Yeah. Tunga Vidya, Chitra, Champakalata, Lalita, Vishaka, Induleka, Ranga Devi, Sudevi. Yes. Right? No, they're all Madhurya Ras. They love Krishna. All the gopis love Krishna. All right, so you understand now the five rasas? Yes. Little avatar Mariji, also, you got it? Yes, I get it. Okay, good. So five rasas. So an advanced realized devotee hears about the affairs of the devotees of Vrindavan in the mellows of Shanta, Dashya, Sakya, Vatsalya, and Madhurya. You see, we're talking about Vrindavan. So in Vrindavan, we wouldn't speak about Hanuman. Hanuman doesn't go to Vrindavan. So the, the servants in Vrindavan, that is Krishna's servants in Vrindavan, that is Raktak and Chitrak, these people, like, they're in Vrindavan. And Madhurya also, there's no Rukmini there in Vrindavan. <laughs> she doesn't come to Vrindavan. Rukmini is in Dwarka. So we're talking about Vrindavan. He becomes inclined in one of those ways, and his intelligence becomes attracted. Indeed, he begins to covet. To covet, it means he's very attached to it that particular type of devotion. When such consciousness is awakened, one's intelligence no longer depends on the instruction of Shastra or on logic and argument. So when we have that greed, that covetousness, it means a, a very strong desire to get it, very greedy to get it, then our intelligence doesn't depend on the, on the scriptures anymore. This is a special, this is a, this is a qualification for Raganuga Bhakti. You want it very badly, you're very, very attracted to it. That's a qualification. What's an example of Santaras in Vrindavan? Well, Santaras could be like the flowers or the trees or even maybe a cow, peacocks, these things. Okay, love of God, chapter 17 to 19. So what, what did we do yesterday? We spoke about the stages of bhava and prema. Bhava is like, bhava is one ray, right? And what is prema? If bhava is one ray of light, one ray of love, what is prema? One ray of the sun. Prima is the whole sun. The whole sun, yes. The whole planet, the whole sun. So, Bhava is the beginning of Prima. And what is the qualification to come to Bhava? What stage do you have to have come to to get to Bhava? By, by practice and uh, by mercy. Okay. You Thank can, you so much. Yes. Uh, to come to the platform Bhava, we must cross the stage of Anarthanivritti and come to the platform Nishtha. Yes. Yes, you have to come through Anarthanivritti. And what are some of the characteristics or the... the, the, the uh, Lakshana... 
the uh, not Tatasta Lakshana, but the <laughs> what's it? The symptoms. Yes, Swarupa. What's the Swarupa Lakshana to come to that stage of Bhava? What should be? There were nine different symptoms of somebody who is at the stage of Bhava. Do you remember some of these characteristics? The nine, nine qualities to come to the stage of Bhava? Yes. Meaning? Not wasting time. Not wasting time. Right. Good. And then second one? Second one is Shanti. To remain now. Uh, Perseverant and tolerant. Okay, to be perseverant and tolerant, tolerant, shanti, yes. He's chanting all the time. Sorry? He's chanting all the time. I think this was one point. Yes, a strong attachment to chanting of the holy name. Yes. Another uh, one. Virati. What? Indifference to objects of self-gratification. Say, say it again, Prabhu. Virakti, indifference to objects of self-gratification. All right, yes, indifferent to the objects of self-gratification. Virakti, different from Vairag, right? Virakti, you're indifferent, you don't even care about it. Vairag, you, you, you're attached, but you don't want it. You don't want to do it, but the mind is attached to it. And you force yourself not to do it. But virakti, you do it naturally. You don't even, you don't want it. You're disgusted with it. So that's good, yes? Some more? To stay at the Mathura or Vrindavan. Stay in a holy place, yes, like Mathura. And pridelessness. Pridelessness, all right, good. Oh. Yes, we should be humble. Give up pride. Don't be proud. Take shelter of Lord Krishna. Krishna. And always certain that Krishna will uh, bestow mercy. Yes, asabandha. Always hope that Lord Krishna is going to bestow his mercy on us. Good. Uh, addiction to glorifying Krishna. All right. Yes. Addiction to glorifying Krishna. Always eager to serve Krishna faithfully. All right. Always eager to do service faithfully. Faithful service. Okay. So you should look over these nine. That's a common question they will ask you in the exam. You want to know these nine things for Baba. And then, Krishna, Maharaj. yes. Maharaj, may I ask one question, Maharaj? Yes. Maharaj, these nine symptoms. So it should be practiced. So. Just like yesterday, we were mentioning that there are people of different qualities, like somebody Brahmana quality, somebody Kshatriya quality. So these qualities are meant only for those who are having Brahmanical qualities, or Kshatriyas also can practice these things. Well, we see uh, Kshatriyas. You know, of course, in the Kali Yuga, we don't have any. These, we don't have Kshatriyas really. We don't have. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, Maharaj. But in the previous ages, the uh, Kshatriyas, you see, if they're going to come to Vrindavan, if they're going to do it, they would come to Vrindavan mm -hmm. and they would give up everything. They'd leave their kingdom, leave everything. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. And, they, you know, they, they wouldn't be Kshatriya anymore. Yes, yeah. 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 So the, the point is you have to become, because you're going to transcend the material nature, so you have to come up to the level of pure goodness. 
you know, that's a, the, one of the qualifications that you should come up to the level of pure goodness. So on, on the level of the, the Brahmana, he is still in the material world. He's a symbol of the mode of goodness. But this, this Raganuga Bhakti, this is beyond that. It's beyond the Brahmana, it's beyond the stage of Brahmana. It's the stage of Shuddha Sattva, pure goodness. So who can do it? Well, well, it doesn't depend really on any material situation. Just like Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga doesn't depend on any material situation. Anybody can do it in any position. You may be a Kshatriya, you may be Vaishya, you may be Sudra. That's only the body. That's only external. But the Raganuga Bhakti is internal, it's not external. You see? So who can do this Raganuga Bhakti? Well, somebody first, they have to want to do it. They have to have an attachment. They have to be very at attracted to want to do it, to come to that stage. And then they can do it. Yes, but thank you for this. They have to have a strong taste for chanting the holy name. They have to have a, a strong taste for hearing about Krishna. And they've given up all kinds of, they're not thinking about their kingdom, they're not thinking about how much gold they've got or anything like that. They've given up all their material desires and they're just taking shelter of the chanting of the holy name and hearing the glories of Lord Krishna. And so that person, he's a Vaishnava, he's not a Brahmin or a Kshatriya or a Vaishya or a Sudra. He's transcended all that. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, okay. Thank you, Maharaj. All right, then the progression from Shraddha to Prema. What is the meaning? Shraddha. Melin? Shraddha. Shraddha means it's like the green mango. It uh, means uh, um, less devotion. Well, what is the meaning of Shraddha? Do you know the meaning? No? I don't know the meaning. You have to learn this. You have to learn this. This is important. You will get this. So, Shraddha means faith. Means faith. That you have faith. In the beginning, you had faith. When you first came, to be with the devotees, you had a faith. You had faith in chanting Hare Krishna. You had faith in reading the book. So faith is very important. Do you have faith now? A little. A little? Is it increasing every day, more and more? Mm, I think now in increasing than before. It should be. It should be increasing. It has to increase. It has to increase. What about Sitala Mataji? How is your faith? Yes, I have. You have faith? Is it increasing? Yes, yes. Good. Yes. Good. So Shraddha, faith, is the beginning. And then what comes after Shraddha? Sitala. Uh, get association with the pure devotee. Association with devotee. How do you? What is the word? And do you know the word in Sanskrit? Uh, sadhu sadhu sangha. Yes, good sadhu sangha. Right. And then what comes next, Lila Avatar? Uh, uh, uh. Shraddha sadhu sangha. The, the next is um, accept the uh, spiritual master? Well, that's not officially. 
Bhajana Kriya. Bhajana Kriya. What is the meaning? Bhajana Kriya? Uh, Bhajana means uh, the, uh, doing the. Chanting the holy name and the. Uh, yeah, doing devotional service. Bhajana Kriya, you do devotional service according to regulated principles. You do devotional service. You come, you start to come, you start to chant every day and to follow the four principles. And then, as Lila Avatar said, you may get initiation. But the stage is Bhajana Kriya. And after Bhajana Kriya, then what's next? Uh, uh, executes uh, regular devotional service. No, that's Bhajana Kriya. Uh, after that, um, free from um, anatta, uh, free from material desires. Yes. Uh, uh, get uh, anat. We say anatta nivritti to get rid of all the dirty things from the heart. Right? Back to Elias. Do yes. you know this? Anartha Nivriti? Back to, back to Elias? Is, is there? Yeah. Yes. What is, an, what is Anartha Nivriti? Yeah, to get free from uh, the, I don't know, unwanted things. What are these unwanted things? I don't know, uh, for example, for, for the opposite of the four principles or doing non-Krishna consciousness things, something like this. Well, it, it's getting rid of the, the dirt from the heart. In the heart, we have things like lust and anger and greed and envy. These things are there in the heart. And we have also we have a tendency to find fault with other people and to criticize other people. These things are all in the heart and these are all anarthas. We have to remove these things from the heart. Right? Ana, anartha nivritti. It means removing the unwanted things, the things we don't want. That's their anartha. Artha means value. Anartha means no value. So get rid of, anivriti means to remove, to destroy. So get rid of the things which have no value, no good. There's no good to be lusty or to be angry or to be greedy or to be jealous and envious. It doesn't help us. So we have to get rid of that from the heart. That is anartha nivritti. All right? So, after anartha nivritti, what comes next? Vibhu Chaitanya. Nishta. Nishta, right. And then after Nishta, what comes? Ruchi. Ruchi, yes. And after Ruchi comes? Asakti. 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 Asakti means what? Asakti means attraction to Krishna. Okay, attraction to Krishna. Ruchi. Nishta means what? What's the meaning of Nishta? Firm faith. For, to be very fixed. Very fixed, fixed, nishta, fixed, you, that you have to do this, you have to, you're very steady, you're going to do it. You know, you're not going to give up, you're not going to go away. You're very fixed. And then ruchi means? Taste. Taste, right. Ruchi. Taste. You, you've got a good taste. You like good, you like kirtan. And you like to see the deities 
you like association, you, uh, you like to hear, that is all ruchi, ruchi, taste. And after ruchi come asakti, asakti means attachment to Krishna. And after asakti comes vibhu chaitanya. Bhava bhakti. Bhava bhakti, yes, ecstasy in devotion. And after bhava comes? Prema bhakti. Prema bhakti, love of God. So this is this progression. You have to remember this, these stages. How many stages? How many? Nine. Huh? Nine. Nine. Have you learned them all now, Sitala? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, say them all. Say more uh, from beginning. Yes. Okay. Uh, first is uh, uh, shrada. Shrada means uh, faith, and uh, sadhu sadhu sangha means uh, get association with uh, devotee, and bhajan uh, bhajan kriya. Vajana Kira means doing devotional service. Um, next is an Ananta Ananta ni, ni, ni This is uh, um, we move our uh, that's a dirty thing. That's a fun heart. And next is uh, ni, Nista. Mm, Nista, I forgot. Nista means uh, fixed. Fixed. Uh, fi uh, fixed. Mm, fixed. And then next is uh, Ruchi. Ruchi means uh, mm, a test for devotional service. Uh, 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 next is as, as, Asakti. Asakti means uh, attachment, uh, attachment for uh, Krishna. And then come to Bhava, Bhava Bhakti means uh, uh, Bhava. That's in English, I don't know, Kwansi. Uh, ex ecstasy. Ecstasy, ecstasy. And then last come to uh, Prima Bhakti means uh, pure love of God. Okay, very good, yes. Okay, now we're going to have our role play, right? We're going to hear about role, this. One partner is meditating on starting the practice of Raganuga Bhakti due to his perception that he has come to the appropriate platform based upon his understanding of the required qualifications. He thus seeks confirmation from an advanced devotee before beginning. His partner, acting as a senior devotee, will mentor him. They will discuss several topics, including anartha nivritti, intensity of greed, sadhana, importance of continuing to offer substantial service to Prabhupada's mission, etc. Okay, so who's, who's, who's going to go first? Will we have the men first? Sudarshan yes, Prabhu? Yes. And, and Shashikan Prabhu? Shashikan. Yes. Yes, Prabhu. Okay, who's, yes, going, who's going to be the, the Raganuga Bhakta? And who's going to be the senior devotee? Uh, I am going to be the senior devotee and Shashikant is going to be the Raganuga Bhakta. Okay. So the scene is like <coughs> here there. Sudarshan Prabhu? Yes. Is it possible to share the screen because I don't have that file? So you don't have the file? Oh. How do I share? But uh, can I, uh, what, you, you, know, you can't open it in the mobile? I can, so I have to minimize this zoom. Okay, okay, you do that, that will be better. Okay, all right.
in the meantime i'll just tell this background scene background it's uh, there are two persons one is Mr. what is balaram das who has returned uh, balaram das has returned to temple after spending whole day preaching krishna consciousness balaram das is the mentor for krishna das so i am playing balaram das and sashikant prabhu is doing krishna krishna das and uh, uh, and this these are the following dialects sashikant prabhu you are ready yeah yes sir yeah please start so hari krishna prabhu please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet million times krishna das today you are looking so meek and humble what's the matter today you are usually different than other days prabhu it looks like i have developed very advanced devotional emotions befitting befitting a candidate for raga raga bhakti so i have come to you to take your permission and blessings to engage myself in this higher level of sadhana of raga nuga bhakti after receiving your permission and blessing i will say final goodbye to you and will retire to radha kund for my advance bhajan with other baba ji living there krishna das prabhu how did you get this inspiration did you go to radha kund alone with without association of advanced devotees and mixed up with the people over there i am concerned for you no prabhu but i have heard about them and i genuinely feel that i must also take up this advanced level of practice of raganuga bhakti to make further advancement in higher realizations of spiritual world and my position there after all i feel that i am i am proper candidate to take up raganuga bhakti hmm prabhu listen carefully to what i say these are not my words but the words coming down in the chain of disciplic succession the practice of which you are talking about is meant only for very advanced and self realized devotees even even they also externally stick to the principle of the regulated devotional service and internally cultivate advanced krishna consciousness on raganuga platform this is not meant for any ordinary devotee who is still with with the uh, st- struggling with anarthas in his heart but prabhu i feel that i have done a genuine creed to practice raganuga bhakti even if for the time being we consider that you have developed genuine creed for raganuga practicing raganuga bhakti this does not mean that you will not consider the rules and regulations of vaidhi bhakti those who are advanced in the krishna consciousness also follow the process of vaidhi bhakti but out of greed for attaining the advanced level of raganuga bhakti they follow uh, they follow such rules and regulations not just for the sake of following but because they are mentioned in the scriptures but with the idea that they will get what they want and do you know what are the symptoms of such genuine greed which are only found in persons highly evolved in his in his krishna consciousness no prabhu do you want to know yes bro very good listen carefully and attentively those who are highly evolved in their krishna consciousness and have thus developed genuine greed to serve krishna intimately and completely uh, are completely dis- distasteful to anything not related to krishna do you think you have developed this symptoms prabhu last night there was very nice halwa cooked in the kitchen and i overate it and because of this today morning i could not get up for mangal aarti guru puja and shrimad bhagavatam class so it's very obvious that my senses are not not in my control but i am being controlled by them good good realization actually when you perform the rules and regulations of vaidhi bhakti then eventually you develop mature greed as mentioned above srila prabhupad says that if we simply en- 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 engage ourselves in pushing a sankirtana movement of sri chaitanya mahaprabhu 
then at the end of our life sri chaitanya mahaprabhu will personally come and cover whatever we lack and take us back to godhead also srila prabhupad says that if you preach that life comes from life you will realize your swarupa in vraja so we can understand that we make advancement in our krishna consciousness by engaging ourselves in preaching sankirtana sankirtana movement following in the footstep of our predecessors very simple thank you very much prabhu for guiding me on right time now i am understanding that i was bewildered by external energy of krishna but i was saved by your association thank you now it is late night go to bed quickly and get up for mangal aarti tomorrow morning yes prabhu thank you hare krishna hare krishna okay hare krishna uh any devotees would like to comment i would have liked to have seen you discuss more about his qualification for taking up raganuga bhakti you know he said i'm going to take up i'm go i've just decided i'm going to do raganuga bhakti you know so you should have discussed what actually is the qualification oh. and of course he said what was it? he said he was eating halva last night and he couldn't get up this morning parmangal arti yeah parmangal arti guru puja bhagavan because he had so much halva the night before so that was uh that was the only thing i thought that there should have been more discussion about that I know so about the greed. You know what kind of greed you have. And how long have you had that greed? You know, it's not like a, you know, oh, I had a dream last night. I think I should go to Vrindavan. You know, it's not just a spontaneous thing that I have the desire now. I want to go to Vrindavan. One has to cultivate that greed over some period of time, and you have to be so, cultivating that interest. And when we discuss that point that uh, those who have developed this trait, actually they are detestful to the material sense gratification, and this stage one attains by performing bhakti bhakti. Did you discuss that? Yeah, yeah, this was there. This was. Well, it was too brief. You didn't bring it out enough. You have mm -hmm. to, okay. you have to discuss it, make it more clear. You know what's actually. going on you can't just simply state it you know you have to explain the greed and then it should have there should have been some analysis like how long have you been a devotee you know how hmm. long have you been feeling like this you know what is your qualification which particular devotee in vrindavan are you aspiring to follow who is who is attracting you something like that you know these are some things which we want to hear to discuss more this raganuga bhakti raganuga bhakti means you're following in the footsteps of some devotee So which devotee were you were you planning to follow? Who was it who was inspiring you to take up this Raganuga bhakti? How long have they been inspiring you? And what are you doing about it? It's not just go to Vrindavan, I'm going to go to Vrindavan and chant there. <laughs> you have to be able to do more than just go and chant. Right? You have to read the books, read study the shastra so these are some things sometimes you know we get people they they want to get initiation and they will find a radhakund babaji they will get a babaji from radhakund and the radhakund babaji will give them initiation 
And then they say, they say Krishna's arrangement. They say, I want, I want it to initiation. Krishna sent a Babaji, the Babaji from Radhakund. I got initiation from the Babaji from Radhakund. And they didn't know any, they weren't following, they didn't, but you know, but the Babaji gave them initiation and they said Krishna's arrangement. So, no, quali no real preparation to enter into that level, you see. To enter into this stage of Raganuga, there has to be cultivation of that interest and that desire. And you do, you're doing more chanting and you're reading and you're very attracted to hear about one particular devotee. And you want to follow that devotee. Mm -hmm. And have, is your guru giving you permission? Who was your guru, you know? Prabhu was a mentor, but who was actually your guru? Did you check with your guru about this? Did anybody ever do it before? You're going to go to Radhakund? Are you going to go on your own? Are you going to be there in Radhakund? What are you going to do? Sit under a tree? <laughs> How long are you going to sit under a tree? Okay, are the Madhijis here? Shobha Mai Keshavi Mataji? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Is Sanjya here also? Yes, Maharaj. Oh, good, yeah. So, did. As to what Prabhu's actually. Uh, enacted, but we will still go ahead with, with your permission, Maharaj. Yes. Uh, so, um, uh, uh, Sandhya Mataji is the Raga Nuga Bhatta, and uh, she's playing the role of the Raga Nuga Bhatta, and I'm playing the role of the senior devotee. Okay. So, yes, Mataji. Hare Krishna Mataji, and the Pranam, I have heard about the affairs of devotees in Vrindavan, and my intelligence has become attracted. I uh, really want to move to Vrindavan and start planning to practicing Raganuga Bhakti. Can you please guide me and give your confirmation? Hare Krishna Mataji. So it's good, good that you have this goal and you want to progress in your sadhana bhakti. So if I may ask you, which devotee have you become attracted to? Particularly what has inspired you? Um, which I really devotee? like I really like the friends of Krishna, the Gopas, and particularly Madhu Mangal. Really like the the story about Krishna where they Krishna and the Gopas where they where they tease him and eat nice stuff, uh, nice ladus and tease him with giving him the flower instead of the of the ladu. Okay, so that's just one part of it, but uh uh, you also need to follow in their footsteps. For this, you need to hear more about the pastimes of Krishna with his Gopa friends. I hope you have uh, um, uh, seen or heard more about their pastimes, especially if you are attracted to Madhumangal. Uh, you need to uh, hear more about, read more about the pastimes. So do you think you can follow in their footsteps and get the same type of devotion? Um, I know I'm a fool and I'm fallen, but still, I feel somehow or the other, I must get this. I'm very ego, I'm willing to do anything. That's good. That is actually the symptom of genuine greed. This intense spiritual greed is what reveals your spiritual nature. And you need to have complete distaste for anything which is not related to Krishna. The bliss of remembering Krishna and his associates is so powerful that it subdues all devo non-devotional attachments. You need to be free from material contamination. And this is called the Anartha Nivriti stage. Unless you get to this stage, it is not possible to follow the footsteps of the denizens of Raja. How is your sadhana going, Mataji? Yes, I follow all the regulative principles of devotional service, but I don't know uh, with the idea that the scriptures, but I do it with the idea the scriptures are saying it. Um, but, I'm sorry, uh, I don't do it with the idea that the scriptures are saying it, but with the idea that in the end I will get what I want. 
Hari Bol, that's a great um, um, way to do it. I mean, I can make out, I can really make out that you have the uh, taste for uh, doing devotional service and you're not doing it with the idea of just doing it. So you must actually render devotional service both externally and internally. Externally follow the regulations and internally meditate the Paramatma feature of the Lord. You should not abandon regular hearing and chanting, worshipping the deity, but do so in a way conducive to your devotional mood. So, are you planning to go to Vrindavan? Yes, I really love to go to Vrindavan. <laughs> Okay, for this you need to get the permission from your spiritual master, from uh, Guru Maharaj. Also remember, now not to forget Srila Prabhupada's mission. Main, main mission of Prabhupada was to spread this message of Lord Chaitanya. So please continue your preaching activities, continue to offer your service to Srila Prabhupada's mission. So you have to be a Ghoshti Anandi and not Bhajan Anandi. You should take all risks and preach for the benefit of the whole society and increase the number of devotees. This will what will please Krishna. In fact, you should not give up any service, you should take up more service. You can stay wherever you are and practice Raganuga Bhakti. It is not necessary that you need to go to Vrindavan. So my, my humble suggestion would be you practice in the same devotional mood for a few more or some more time uh, wherever you are. And then when you are properly ready for it, you can take up to Raganuga Bhakti. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, I would uh, I would like to see you discuss more about her her sadhana. What what level of sadhana had she reached? You know, how much chanting was she doing, and how much time a day was she spending reading scriptures, and what scriptures was she reading? These kind of things, you know, we'd like to know. You know somebody. You know, you want to do Raganuga Bhakti? Really? How long have you been initiated? Have you got your second initiation? <laughs> you're not even second initiated yet and you're going to do Raganuga Bhakti? Really? You know, you have to, you have to been, to, somebody's thinking about taking up Raganuga Bhakti they have to be very well established in Krishna consciousness. They should have been initiated for a good long time, not a sudden thing. And they've been doing sadhana bhakti for a long time without difficulties, and they haven't had any difficulties for a long time. And they do a lot of chanting, they're very regular, every morning, come to the morning program. They love to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. And on their own, they're reading, maybe they're reading 10th Canto Srimad Bhagavatam. And they're reading the commentaries of all the Acharyas. And they're reading Chaitanya Charitamrita, especially. The reading about Lord Chaitanya's talking with Ramananda Rai, and they're discussing about the gopis. So these kind of things you want to know. You know or, or you, this Madhiji, she said she was following. Was it? So, uh, she wanted to be a friend of Krishna. She wanted to. Was it? A, so, what Brahmana? <laughs> Um, Madhu Mangal, Madhu Mangal, right. Madhu Mangal, you wanted to follow him. So, you know, what do you know about Madhu Mangal? You know, you're following Madhu Mangal. You just eat sweets all the time, like Madhu Mangal. How do you, you're going to follow Madhu Mangal? He's a Brahmin, a friend of Krishna. Hmm. We have to know the leelas, the different leelas which are there. You'd want to be absorbed in re reading the different leelas of these devotees, how he interacts with Krishna. So, 
coming to Raganuga Bhakti, taking up Raganuga Bhakti, there has to be that longing. How long? You know, you have a greed. How long have you had that greed? You know, what time are we talking about? What period of time are we talking about? How long have you had that greed? It's not just, you know, a few days or a few weeks or even a few months. It should be, it, it's, it's been there for a while. It's a long, you know, it's been with you for a while. You've had that greed for some time. And what service are you doing in the temple? What is your engagement there in the temple? Do you have a, a big responsibility? Because if you go away, who's going to take up your service? Is somebody there to take up your service? If you're going to go off to a holy place, someone has to be there to cover for your service. If nobody is there to cover for your service, that will create a lot of difficulty. So we don't want to put the temple into difficulty. You go away, you give up service. Lord Chaitanya liked to see devotees maintain their service. We know Gadarhar Pandit was going to leave and he, was, he wanted to follow Lord Chaitanya to South India. And Lord Chaitanya wouldn't let him come. He said, no, you stay here. You stay in Jagannath Puri. He said, you have your deity. You have Tota Gopinath to take care of. You have to stay and worship that. But Gadara wanted to go with Lord Chaitanya. But Lord Chaitanya wouldn't let him. He said, no, you have to stay. So Lord Chaitanya wanted pe people to be steady in their service. And even Lord Nityananda, Lord Chaitanya told Lord Nityananda that your field is to preach in Bengal. So he told him, don't come for Rathayatra next year. Just stay in Bengal and preach. But Lord Nityananda came anyway. <laughs> Lord Nityananda is above all the rules and regulations. But Lord Chaitanya wanted people to be steady. And Prabhupada also, he liked to see devotees also steady in their service. He liked to see people stay and maintain their services. So Raganuga Bhakti, you're going to take up Raganuga Bhakti, you can continue your service. As Madhiji said, you can be Gostavanandi, you don't have to be Bhajananandi. You can continue to be Raganuga Bhakta. And at the same time, continue your service. You don't have to go to Vrindavan. You can be in Vrindavan mentally. Within the mind, you can be in Vrindavan. There's no reason to go off to another place. Just stay where you are. There were many devotees in Lord Chaitanya Leela. They never went to Vrindavan. There were many people. They just, like Pundarik Vijanidi and... Uh, Gadarhar Pandit, they didn't go to Vrindavan. They just stayed. They just stayed in Bengal and Arissa. So that example was given that there are many devotees, many followers of Lord Chaitanya. They didn't go to Vrindavan, but they were great devotees. They were eternal associates of Krishna, but they they, they didn't need to. They didn't go to Vrindavan. And Prabhupada said, our duty is to give Vrindavan to others. So sometimes people, they give up the, their service and they go away and they go to Vrindavan and they just want to sit and chant. Okay, you go for Kartik, go for one month and then come back. <laughs> you know, you don't need to go and stay in Vrindavan. Unless, of course, you're very old, at the end of life, and then you can go to Vrindavan, you can sit down and chant. All right, that's allowed, if you want. All right, are there any questions? Anybody has any comments or questions about this? We want to understand Raganuga Bhakti.
Anyway, it's some. We do see some devotees. There are some people in our movement, even who are, you know, very attached to that kind of mood. They do a lot of chanting. They do a lot of reading as well. But they stay in the movement. They stay in Krishna consciousness. They're very active in devotional service. So it's not that you cannot advance. Some people say, oh, ISKCON is only for neophytes. Some people say like that. They say, oh, ISKCON is only for neophytes. You should go to another society. You will advance more. You'll go to Raganuga Bhakti. You'll become a great devotee. It's bogus. It's nonsense. There are many very advanced devotees in ISKCON. You don't need to leave ISKCON. You think Prabhupada was not advanced? You think Prabhupada was not an advanced devotee? Prabhupada created ISKCON. Of course, Prabhupada was the most advanced. Okay. Let's see here. Right, we were supposed to discuss these topics. Anartha Nevriti. How much have we got rid of the anarthas? The anartha, meaning anartha is like the desire, you know, desire for profit or adoration or distinction. You know, sometimes we think like that. We, we have some material desire. We're, we want to be known as a great devotee. And then the intensity. Intensity of greed. Do we really have that strong desire? Sadhana. How, how good are we doing in our sadhana? And then the importance of continuing to offer service to Prabhupada's mission. You don't give up a service. You have a, an important service to do in ISKCON. You don't give it up. You stay in Krishna consciousness. That's very important. Okay? So, that is Srila Prabhupada teachings there. All right? So, what did we cover in this Nectar of Devotion course? We have covered only the first section of this uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, the Nectar of Devotion. There are four sections to the ocean, remember? The east, west, north, south. We have only looked at the east section and we spoke about sadhana bhakti and the different two different ways in which we can do sadhana bhakti, vaidhi sadhana bhakti and raganuga sadhana bhakti. And then we spoke a little bit about bhava bhakti and tiny bit was spoken about prema bhakti. Bhava bhakti and prema bhakti are very elevated things. They will come by the mercy of Krishna, not just by our own efforts but by the mercy of Krishna. And we mentioned the nine characteristics of somebody who is actually at, at the level of bhava bhakti. We spoke about those things and we have been speaking also about the stages in devotional practice from Shraddha to Prema. So those kind of things you need to know. We should know the characteristics. What are the two characteristics of somebody doing sadhana bhakti? What, what did... What are the benefits? Do sadhana bhakti. What are the two characteristics immediately achieved? Shashikan, do you know? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, one is Klesh Agni and Subhada. Yes, good. Yes, Klesh Agni, relief from all material distress. And Subhada, the beginning of all auspiciousness. Right? And then there's two more characteristics to Bhava Bhakti. Who knows? Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj Ji. 
it's moksha ka moksha lagutakrit and uh, uh, sudurlabha rarely achieved and uh, uh, deriding the concept of liberation very good yes right and then there's two more added to that to get prema bhakti sanjamaraji do you know No, sorry, Maharaj. No, you don't know? Uh, who knows? Sudarshan, do you know? Two more characteristics to come to Prima, which you get in Prima Bhakti? Sandrananda Visheshatma and Sri Krishna Karshini. The only way to attract Krishna. And put incalculable. In, in, incalculable. Okay, very good. Incalculable bliss, right? Inconceivable bliss. So that is it, prema bhakti. So three different levels of devotional service. We are concentrating on sadhana bhakti, hearing and chanting. It's the basis of sadhana bhakti. We have to hear, we have to chant regularly, and make a strong foundation. And you get a good foundation, then you will come up to bhava bhakti and prema bhakti gradually in time not immediately so when you do nectar of instruction you will hear more about how we can progress what items are important all right have you finished your essays did you write your open book essays no? Still in process, Maharaj. Huh? Still, still writing. Still writing? When, it, when are they having the closed book test? We haven't been informed yet, Maharaj. Nobody told you yet? Okay. That most will be probably after. by this weekend, most probably. Not yet declared. Okay. Because from 7th seventh, from seventh Monday, we'll start our new session. Okay. Sir. Monday, you're starting? Nectar of instruction. Yes. Okay. Who's teaching? His name is I'll just tell him. Krishna Kesha Prabhu. Krishna Keshava. Yes. Krishna oh. Keshava. Oh okay. No, he's, he's very good. He's from London, I suppose. Yeah, he's in London, yeah. He was here, he had to go back, his health wasn't very good, but he's a very good teacher. Okay, so we're finished, then we'll stop here. If there are no more questions, we'll just finish. Anybody has any other question? <coughs> Maharaj. Maharaj, I have a question on the definition of Ragatmika Bhakti and Raganuga Bhakti. Uh -huh. So I was reading, I was reading in uh, Nectar of Devotion, Rupa Gos in the chapter 15, uh, Srila Rupa Goswami has defined Raga Nuga Bhakti as spontaneous attraction for something while completely absorbed in thoughts in it with an intense desire of love. So uh, devotional service executed with such feelings of spontaneous love is called Raga Nuga Bhakti. But we saw a similar definition for Raga Atmika Bhakti and so I was a little confused. Raganuga, we said that it was following the footsteps of the uh, denizens of Braja, right? Yes. So I was a little confused on what to write for Ragatmika Bhakti. Well, Ragatmika Bhakti were, you see, these are the eternal residents of Vrindavan. These are the, these are the perfect devotees. They've, they've already achieved perfection. The Raganuga Bhaktas, they never, you know, so the, the Raganuga Bhaktas, they're 
trying to be, they're trying to come to that level of ragat mika bhatta. So, the raganuga bhaktas, they follow the ragat mika devotees. So there's not a lot of difference between the two. Just okay, so the, we can just write uh, the same definition and we can um, make it, uh, say that is ragatmika bhakti and those who follow ragatmika bhaktas are the raganuga, something like that Maharaj, because I don't know what exactly to write for the definition. Yeah, uh, we had a definition. Let me see. I, I, where that was back in? Did you? Did we send you. Yeah, I can take it from the PPT, Maharaj. Yeah, yeah there is a definition. It's there in the PPT, right? The, okay, Maharaj. I'll take it from there. Maharaj. Yeah, but the, the, the ragat mika devotees means like Mother Yashoda, Nanda Maharaj, Radharani. These people, you know. Now we cannot become them, but we can follow the the footsteps. Just like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's teaching Radha Bhav. Radha, Radha Bhav. He's cultivating the mood of Radharani, the love which Radharani has for Krishna. So, you know, Lord Chaitanya is instructing all of us this process of Radha Bhava, having that love for Krishna, love for Radha following in the mood of Radharani and developing that kind of love and attachment to Krishna. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in that mood of the gopis, following them. And all Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's followers, they were also in that same kind of mood. Gopi Bhartup, Dasa Dasanada, following the mood of the gopis. The, mood, the best of the gopis is Radharani. So they and if we follow, we we'll also become, enter into the pastimes of Krishna. You enter into the pastime and you become also a Radharani. Not that we become Radharani, not that we could become some, but we could become one of their associates. We can be following them and associating with them. So we, we would come to that kind of stage. That's what's... So that this... Not a big distinction between the two, you can see. Yes, Prabhu. Maharaj, <laughs> regarding the qualification for uh, uh, cultivating uh, this Raghavaka Bhakti, it was mentioned that uh, one should sadhana and seva. So, Maharaj, I was wondering, Ms. what is that long time? How, do, how will we understand? It's like you know, Rupa Goswami says in the Nectar of Instruction, he said, this patient, mm -hmm. you know. So that kind of patience you have to have. Not that immediately you're going to get the highest level of Krishna consciousness. So we have to, we have to be working, we have to be endeavouring, but at the same time we have to be patient that it's going to take some time. It's not going to immediately come. Now how much time is it going to take? Well, that's up to Krishna. Mm -hmm. oh. And it also depends on our own efforts, right? There's two things. There's our own sadhana and also mercy. Krishna's mercy, how... how how much mercy are you going to get? It will depend on our own sadhana, how, how are we endeavouring, how are we applying ourselves to the process to cultivate our Krishna consciousness, and how much mercy is Krishna giving? How much are we able, are we able to get the mercy? Are we worthy of it? Yeah. Does Krishna consider we are worthy candidates of his mercy? This means, Maharaj, we should go ahead with our sadhana and service, meanwhile uh, waiting for that mercy to come. Yes, right. Okay. You have, we have to depend on the mercy of Krishna. Mm -hmm. And at the same time we do everything to try to get the mercy of Krishna, to attract the mercy of Krishna. Okay. So, Mr. this sadhana and service will be enough, Maharaj, or some other extra endeavor? Well, sadhana enough, well, 
Sadhana, of course, we do, when we speak of sadhana, we mean everything in relation to Krishna consciousness. So preaching, making great efforts to do more to, and to give Krishna consciousness to others. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes who is very dear to me. Right? Who is very dear? Krishna said, Nachatasman Manusheshu Kashyan Me Priyakritama. There is no one more dear than that person who is trying to teach, giving Krishna consciousness to others. So you give the mercy, the more you give the mercy, the more you get the mercy. Yes, Mother. And you do bhajana, if you become a bhajana nandi, you, you're just, you know, you're only thinking of yourself. But if you're the ghost of Anandi, you're giving mercy to others. You get more mercy from Krishna that way, by distributing the mercy. So better to give. Thank you, Manas. Hare Krishna. All right, any other questions? Yes. I have one more question. Yes. Regarding this unearth naming, so Maharaj, I was wondering this. There is one term I really don't understand this properly. So this self righteousness, becoming self righteousness. So how? What is this actually, and how it is obstacle to our bhakti devotional service? Self righteous. Yeah. Well, self-righteous means we're thinking I'm pure, we're thinking I'm very good, I'm very great, I'm very, I, you know, I'm doing everything very well. So this is a, this is a obstacle. We're thinking, you know, I'm, I did everything I'm supposed to do, I'm very good devotee. Okay. So some pride is there. Oh, So that's an obstacle to devotional service, right? We should, devotee, the more we advance, the more humble we become. And we see the great devotees, how they're so humble. Naratam das Thakur, he said, there's nobody more fallen than me. And Krishna das Kaviraj said, I am lower than a worm in stool. Anyone who utters my name, They'll lose all their pious activities. So, like that. So, making spiritual advancement, the more we are advancing, then we should become humble. And offer all respect to others. Amanina manadena kirtaniya sadahari. Always offering respects to others and not eager to be respected. That's an obstacle. So self-righteous is thinking, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good, you know, I'm, I'm a good, I'm a good devotee, I'm great, you know, I don't do anything. So that's a problem. And Maharaj, does it have anything to do with giving credit to predecessors, Maharaj? Giving credit? To our previous acharyas, our spiritual master, previous acharyas, devotees around us. Well, definitely we should be. We should be offering all respect to the previous acharyas. Mr. Credit, just, just like if, if we become instrument in doing some service, so if we give that uh, credit for that service to our, uh, our predecessors and uh, devotees around us, then will we come out from that self righteous mentality like that? Yes, it could help. Yes, it will help. Yes, offering respect to others, offering all respect, seeing the good in others and seeing our own faults. Right? That's what we want. We, we want to have that ability to look at our own faults and not to think I'm, you know, I'm good. There's nothing wrong with me. <laughs> we want to see our own faults 
and that will make us, that will help us to be humble and to think of ourselves low and that will help us to purify ourselves and to chant with more feeling. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Manas. Okay. All right, so we will stop here today. This is it. Thank you all very much for giving me an opportunity to go through this section of Nectar of Devotion. And we wish you all good luck in your ongoing study of Bhakti Shastri. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Just want to say something, Maharaj. On behalf of our entire uh, team out here, we would like to wish you happy Vyas Puja in advance, which oh. is on Feb. Okay. Uh, and, and we are very much thankful to you. We are very thankful to have you as our teacher. And His Holiness, uh, Bhakti Vigna Vinasa Narasimha Maharaj ki jai. Jai Srila Prabhupada ki. Go back to Vindaki. Hare Krishna.